let's look at part B. What is part B say? Part B says that let K be greater than zero. All right, let K be greater than zero. Now, since K is greater than zero, all right, let K be greater than zero and let F of K be equal to one over K square. All right, let K be greater than zero and F of K, F of K is equal to one over K square. And let's hear what they're asking us to do now. They say that, show that F of K minus F of K plus one is equal to that thing there. So let's do that. F of K minus F of K plus one. F of K minus F of K plus one. Now F of K minus F of K plus one. F of K is equal to one over K square. Minus F of K plus one, you replace K with K plus one. So you get one over K plus one all square. So you get one over K plus one all square. Nice. So you have one over K square minus one over K plus one all square. Okay, now if you go ahead now and you expand the denominator for that side, you're gonna get one over K square minus one over K plus one all square. When you expand that, it's gonna become first term square plus twice the product of the two, which is plus two K plus second term square, which is plus one. After you do that, so now you have K square and K square plus two K plus one, all right? Well, it didn't even need to expand it. Based on what I'm seeing down there, we didn't need to expand it. So let's not expand it. I thought they wanted us to expand it. It didn't have to. Looking at the question, it just found the LCM. So all we need to do is find the LCM. The LCM between the two is gonna be K squared times K plus one all squared. And then K square into this, leave K plus one all square. Minus K plus one all square into this leaves K square. Now K plus one all square minus K square. Remember K plus one all square is K square plus two K plus one. And so when you subtract the K squares, they're gonna just get two K plus one in the numerator. So in the numerator, you're just gonna get two K plus one over your K square times K plus one all square. This was a very boring question. You can't even yawn, oh, too easy. This was boring. All right, no little spice to it. No spice at all. No sugar, nothing, all right? So that's the first part of the question that F of K minus F of K plus one is that. Generally, when you take the difference of two term, you know that a method of difference question is coming. It is coming. I don't know when, but it is coming. Now part B, it was coming in part B. Part B says, hence find the sum from one to N of one over K square minus one over one plus, over one over K plus one on square. So we're finding the sum, really and truly what we're signing is the sum from one to N of F of K. So we're finding the sum from one to K of f of k minus f of k plus one. 
that's what really and truly finding. All right, this is what we're finding. Now, once you're doing this, you're finding the sum from one to n of f of k minus f of k plus one. It's gonna be equal to, no, I'm gonna work out the sum from one to n of f of k first. The sum from one to n of f of k, let's put it in blue. When you put in one, when n is equal to one, one square is one plus, remember sum means adding, when k equal two, you get one over two square, which is one over four, plus when k equal three, you get one over nine, and you continue to when you put in n, and n is gonna be plus one over n square. Cool. Minus, let's do it in a different color now. Let's do this in purple. Let's say minus, let's f of k plus one now. When k equal one, you get one over one plus one square is one over four. So you get minus one over four. Then put in k equal to two plus one is three, three square is nine. So you get a quarter plus one over nine. Plus you keep on plugging in values until you reach the last term when you put in the last term, the last term is, we put k as n, you get one over n plus one all square. Nice. So that's method of differences. Now, look here. Now a quarter minus a quarter, this quarter gonna cancel. This one over nine gonna cancel. All the other terms gonna cancel. This one over n square gonna cancel with the one over n square before here. And so what you're left back with is one minus one over n plus one all square. Nice and easy, soft. You have left back with one over, one minus one over n plus one all square. That's part B. Nice and easy, soft. It says now, hence or otherwise, prove that the sum from one to infinity is one. It says hence or otherwise, so you don't have to use the hence, but I'm gonna use the hence, okay? because the sum, they're asking us to evaluate the sum from k equal one to infinity. They're asking us to evaluate the sum from k equal one to infinity of two k plus one over k times k plus one all square. But the only little, the only little, here I'm using the word little, the only little trick is that the sum from one to infinity of this, we have to realize that this is just the sum from one to infinity of f of k minus f of k plus one. That's the only little trick. So this is just the sum from one to infinity of f of k minus f of k plus one. That's the only little trick. But remember the sum from one to infinity of f of k minus the sum from one to infinity of f of k plus one. All of this we had just evaluated and we found that it is equal to one. So all you're really asking us for Remember that all of this now, we're just finding the sum from one to infinity. So this is gonna be one minus one over, you're gonna plug in n as infinity now, plugging in n as infinity, you're gonna get infinity plus one, infinity 
plus one. We're replacing it with n now. We're replacing n with infinity. But no, infinity plus one all square is infinity. One over infinity is zero. And so the sum works out to be one minus zero and one minus zero is one. So hence the summation of this is one. Too easy, soft. Then we'll go to part C. Part C says obtain the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series expansion of cosine of x. Obtain the first four non-zero terms. So before I can actually do that, I just want to write on the Taylor series formula. So just to remind us of the Taylor series formula. The Taylor series formula tells us that f of x is equal to f of a plus f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a Just writing down the Taylor series formula, f double prime of a times x minus a square over two, and it continues. This is just the Taylor series formula. Don't you ever forget it. Okay, now that we're done writing down the Taylor series formula, it wants us to use the function f of x as cos x, and we're gonna write it in ascending powers of x minus pi by four. So in this case, they're telling us a is pi by four and x is, and f of x is cos x. Let me change the color and do that in red. So in this case, f of x is cosine x, so f of x is equal to cos x. So if f of x is cos x, then what does that tell us? That tells us that f of pi by four, f of pi by four is gonna be equal to, plug in x as pi by four, the cos of pi by four is the cos of 45 and the cos of 45 degrees is root two over two. Nice. Then then now if f of x is cos x, then f prime of x is gonna be equal to, when you differentiate cos, you get minus sign. When you differentiate cos, you get minus sign. And so f prime of pi by four, f prime of pi by four, f prime of pi by four is actually going to be equal to plugging in x as pi by four and we're getting minus root two over two. Okay. All right, and then now we differentiate this now again to get f double prime, f double prime of x when you differentiate it again now, when you differentiate sine, you differentiate sine, you get cos, so it's gonna become minus cos x. And so what we're getting now is that f double prime of pi by four, f double prime of pi by four is gonna be equal to minus root two over two minus root two over two. And finally, just to finish it off right here, we're gonna get that if triple prime of X is when you differentiate minus cos, you differentiate minus cos, you get sine. So you're gonna get sine X. And we already know what F so f triple prime, I'm gonna write f3 of x, which means f triple prime of x. f triple prime of x is equal to, again, root two over two. 
Okay, good now. So now we can go ahead and proceed to say that f of x, now we can proceed to say that f of x is equal to f of a, f of a is root two over two plus f prime of a, f prime of a, f prime of a, which was minus root two over two. So instead of putting plus, I'm gonna put a minus here. So this is now minus root two over two times x minus a, and a in this case is pi by four, so it's minus x minus pi by four. Then it is now plus f double prime, plus f double prime of a, f double prime is minus root two over two again. So this becomes minus root two over two, minus root two over two times x minus pi by four square. And all of this is being divided by two. All right. And then we have plus f triple prime, f triple prime, which is root two over two. Now we have plus root two over two. times x minus pi by four cube. And this is divided by three factorial and three factorial is six. Now guys, I really don't like how this look with so much fraction. Root two over two divided by two. Root two over two divided by two. I'm just going to rewrite this a different way. I'm going to pretty this up a little bit. So when you're dividing this by two, root two over two, you can actually pretty this up a bit. And I can't but I rewrite over a whole line. So please bear with me. I'm going to take away this two, take away this line, and rewrite this as root two over four. Right, I really can't bother write over another line. And I'm gonna take away this, write this as root two over 12. Root two over two divided by six is 12. So I rewrite it that way, all right? That looks easier to understand. Okay, so that's the first part, that's five marks. Now let's say hence, calculate an approximation of the cosine of pi by 68. So part two, so this is cos x, all right? So this is a formula for cosine x, all right? And so what that means is the cosine of pi by 16 means that we're gonna substitute x as pi by 16 in this formula. So the cosine of pi by 16 is going to be root two over two minus root two over two times the cos, well, times pi by 16 minus pi by four, pi over 16 minus pi over four. All we're doing is substituting x as pi by 16 minus root two over two minus root two over four, sorry, minus root two over four times x minus pi by four, and x is pi by 16, so this is pi by 16. This is now pi by 16 minus pi by four, all square plus root two over 12 
times x is now pi by 16 minus pi by 4 cube. All right, so you put all of this in a calculator and then you're gonna get your value for the cosine of pi by 16. So I'm gonna put this in my calculator. I'll write it out one by one so you can see how I get each term. Root two over two is 0 0.707. So the first part is 0 0.707 minus put in this part of the calculator root 2 over 2 root 2 divided by 2 multiplied by pi divided by 16 minus pi divided by 4 multiplied by minus root 2 over 2 I get plus, so this part gonna work out to be plus 0 0.4165. Then I work out the next part now, which is pi divided by 16 minus pi minus pi divided by four. Then I square that result and multiply it by root two divided by four. And that's giving me minus 0 0.12267 plus finally, I have pi divided by 16 minus pi divided by four. I'm gonna cube that result and multiply it by root of two divided by 12. And I'm getting minus 0 0.02408, all right? So now I put all of this in my calculator and I'm gonna add them up now, 0 0.707 plus 0 0.4165 minus 0 0.12267 minus 0 0.02408 and I get, 0 0.977, all right? And uh, that's my answer to three significant figures, 0 0.977. So that's the cost of pi by 16. If you don't believe it, put in the cost of pi by 16 otherwise, you're gonna get 0 0.98. So our answer is relatively accurate. So I guess we rounded off pretty fine. And that's Taylor series expansion, soft. Let's go to question four. <clears throat> 